I can remember a couple years ago when I first met Dylan Patrick. We met through a mutual friend and I actually ended up over at Dylan's apartment in New York. And I can remember just being blown away by his images because I think his pictures are probably some of the most unique and stylized pictures I've ever seen a photographer take before. When you see a Dylan Patrick picture, you immediately know who took that shot. I think for every photographer, there comes a point in your career where you have to learn how to take a headshot. It's just one of those genres that every photographer has to be really proficient at. And we did our first tutorial with Peter Hurley and I felt like I learned so much about how to craft the face and make people look really good in front of a camera. But for a lot of photographers, they don't have a studio. They need to work on location. They need to go to their clients. And I think Dylan Patrick's technique produces some of the most interesting headshots I've ever seen on location. I personally like to throw the background way out of focus, which means you're gonna to wanna to keep your model as far away from that background as possible. I'm gonna zoom the 70 to 200 all the way to 200, and I'm gonna just take a few shots of this background here to see what it looks like out of focus. If you're going to run a successful headshot photography business, you really need some repeatable results. And obviously, if you have uh, some kind of studio, that makes it really, really easy. But if you don't have a studio, like most photographers don't, what are you gonna do? Are you only gonna be able to shoot in the evenings? Are you only going to be able to shoot at one location outside every single day? Well, Dylan has actually come up with this system that allows him to shoot at any time of day in any location and get the exact same results time and time again. And I find it really amazing. We decided to take it to a whole other level. We drove up to the top of a parking garage and we found what could be the ugliest background known to man. And we turned it into something where my lovely model Leva just said, I look like a movie star. That's what we want to hear from our clients. When I first saw Dylan's work, I could not figure out how he produced these images because obviously he was doing something very similar for each shot because they had a very similar theme, but obviously the background was completely different in every shot too. I assumed that he was using an overhead scrim and he was using tons of studio lighting. And I was absolutely shocked to find out that he can produce these shots with just one single speed light. And at most, he'll use two speed lights. He never uses more than two speed lights. I usually have this backlight on parallel line with whatever my key light is, so that when it comes in, it's gonna, she's gonna be looking this way and it's gonna hit her beautiful hair right here on the side. Sometimes we may have to feather it just a little bit to the right if it's too much, or if we need more of it, we bring it into the left. And I only move that a couple of inches. If you're looking to take really high-end professional headshots and stay on a really tight budget and just use minimal gear, I can't imagine a better solution than Dylan Patrick's single speed light lighting technique. So now that we've talked about all the camera gear, it's time to move on to what I use for my key light. What we have here is Last Delight's 36 inch Hot Rod Octa. As you probably know, if you want shallow depth of field like we're getting in this shot right here, you're gonna have to shoot at a very wide open aperture. But the problem is, if you're going to shoot with a wide open aperture in the middle of the day, you're going to go beyond your maximum sync speed on your camera and you're not going to be able to use strobe. Well, Dylan has come up with this system of lighting and with using high speed sync to be able to create flash photography images in any lighting situation. All right, so as you can see in these two images, this is, this is why high speed sync can be so powerful to you. We have one image shot at 1250th of a second, 3.2, where we have the background under control and a nice blurry background where if I didn't tell you there were cars in the background, you probably wouldn't know. However, in this shot, I tried to stay within traditional sync speed of 1 250th, and I ended up having to go to 7.1 to get the background similarly under control as our, as our high speed sync shot. And what you're gonna find, without using high-speed sync, I'm forced to shoot at f7.1, 
and I can tell that there's a truck in the background now and a bench and part of a couple other cars and it's really just not as pretty as shooting in high speed sync with a much blurrier background. What's really cool about this tutorial is Dylan takes you out on location and he shows you exactly how he crafts his headshots with three different models. After he gets done showing you all the techniques that he uses to build these images, he then goes into the studio and shows you all of the retouching methods he uses to make these images really shine. When it comes to shooting and running a business, the most important thing for me was streamlining the process from shooting to editing. And so it became really important to get as much as we could in camera so that the editing could go even faster. In the end, you should be able to retouch a headshot in about 30 or 40 minutes once you've really picked up on the techniques of things. He's going to give you the files, you're going to get to download them with this tutorial, and you're going to get to watch him and follow along as he edits each one of the pictures. So the first thing that we're going to do when it comes to frequency separation is we're going to duplicate the background layer. That's, that way we can just you know edit on top of it without it being destructive to the file, the original file. And then I'm going to go ahead and make two more layers. Now, here's where the, the frequency separation part comes in handy. We're going to select this layer. We're going to go up to Image, go down to Apply Image, and it's going to give you this gray kind of background layer with this dialog window that pops up. When shooting headshots, I think it's really important for your images to stand out from every other person's headshots that are out there. And I have no doubt that when you take these techniques and go outside and choose your own backgrounds, you're going to have images that look unlike anybody else's and they're really going to be your own style. So if we're looking at the compression of just the background, you'll notice that with the 200 millimeter lens, the background looks like it's right behind them, but super blurry. With the 85 millimeter lens looks like it's a little farther away and even with the 50 it looks like it's really far away and you don't get as much separation or as much background blurry compression as you would with 200 millimeters. When I first saw Dylan's work I thought to myself how in the world is he getting pictures to look like this? Is, is that background photoshopped in afterwards? I've never seen anything that was strobed but also had such a shallow depth of field had this really cinematic look to it and that's why we ended up naming this tutorial the cinematic headshot. So when we talk about shutter speed, first there are two parts to your shutter. The first curtain opens, the second curtain opens and exposes the sensor to light and this will work properly with flash all the way up until your maximum camera sync speed which for most cameras is around 1 250th of a second. It could be as low as 160th of a second or sometimes as high as 320th of a second. If you're the type of photographer that enjoys shooting outside and you want to learn how to harness the power of the sun plus flash in any given lighting situation to create really studio looking shots outside, you're really going to love this tutorial. You, you know the difference between talking to a guy like this and talking to a guy like that. It has that immediate emotional feel and that's, you know, just simple little thing of bringing your chin down a couple inches will convey that. Nice. To learn everything about this tutorial and all of the other tutorials that we have for sale, head over to fstoppers.com slash stores.